This is part 76 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss read committed snapshot isolation level. This is continuation to part 75, so please watch part 75 before proceeding. One very important thing to keep in mind is that read committed snapshot isolation level is not a different isolation level. It's a different way of implementing read committed isolation level. One problem we have with read committed isolation level is that it blocks the transaction if it's trying to read the data that another transaction is updating at the same time. Let's look at this in action. We have two instances of SQL Server Management Studio. We also have a table that keeps track of how many items we have in stock. At the moment, items in stock value is 10. We have our transaction 1 here, and this transaction is trying to update items in stock value to 5. Let's execute part of this transaction. This transaction is still in progress because we have not executed commit or rollback transaction yet. We have our transaction 2 on the right and look at the transaction isolation level. We have set it to read committed and look at what this transaction is trying to do. It's reading the same data that transaction 1 is updating at the moment. So imagine what's going to happen when we execute transaction 2. It's going to be blocked until transaction 1 completes. And that's the default behavior of read committed isolation level. You can't read data that's being updated by another transaction. Your transaction will be blocked. Imagine what's going to happen when we commit this transaction. At that point, transaction 2 is unblocked and allowed to move forward and it retrieves the data that transaction 1 has committed to the database. Now let's see how things are going to change when we use read committed snapshot isolation level. To use read committed snapshot isolation level we have to enable that at the database level. So I'm going to use alter database statement. The name of our DB is sample DB. Set read committed snapshot on. So we have to turn on read committed snapshot option. Let's execute this statement and look at this. This statement execution is blocked. That's because if you want to turn on or off this read committed snapshot option, you will have to close all the other database connections. So let's close this instance of SQL Server Management Studio. And the moment we do that, the statement executes successfully. Now let's fire up SQL Server Management Studio again connect to the DB, open a new query editor window, select our sample DB, and then paste the queries that we have copied. Now let's change this value back to 10, and we want to update it to a value of 5. Let's select the data just to make sure it's value 10. All right. Now, we have enabled read committed snapshot option. And keep in mind, read committed snapshot isolation level is not a different isolation level. It's a different way of implementing read committed isolation level. So that means we don't have to change the isolation level anymore. It will be read committed. Since we have turned on read committed snapshot option, it's going to now use row versioning instead of logs to read data. That means this transaction will no longer be blocked. Let's look at that in action. So let's comment this alter database statement and execute part of our transaction one. So transaction one is in progress and the initial value, the initial committed value in the DB was 10, but now transaction one is in the process of updating it to a value of five. Now let's execute. This transaction one is not completed yet. Now let's execute our transaction two. The first thing to notice here is that transaction two is not blocked. It returns immediately with the data that was there in the DB before transaction one started. So this is the committed data that was there in the DB before transaction one started. So now this read committed isolation level, it's actually using row versioning. So this is called as read committed snapshot isolation level. In our previous video session, we discussed snapshot isolation level. Now let's see if we can achieve the same thing using snapshot isolation level instead of read committed snapshot isolation level. For that, first let's go ahead and turn off read committed snapshot option. So I'm going to turn this off. Let's execute this. 
and look at that it's going to be blocked again because we have another uh, other connections to the DB so let's finish this transaction by committing it copy the queries to the clipboard and let's close our SQL Server Management instance the query completes let's fire it again and let's change it back to a value of 10 select it and we want to update it to 5 now let's turn on snapshot isolation and again we have to enable it at the database level so alter database sample db set allow snapshot isolation we want to turn that on so we have enabled snapshot isolation and we also want to change the isolation level of the transaction to snapshot so now we are using snapshot isolation level instead of read committed snapshot isolation level so let's execute part of our transaction one let's comment this alter database statement and execute our transaction two now it behaves exactly same like read committed snapshot isolation level so now the obvious question that comes to our mind is what is the difference between read committed snapshot isolation level and snapshot isolation level there are several differences we will discuss these differences in detail in our next video session thank you for listening and have a great day